Hey everybody, my name is Corey Alley and I am a local church pastor in Concord, North Carolina of a four-year-old church plant called Sojo. And today I have the incredible privilege and honor of talking to you guys about this beautiful thing called baptism that changed my life when I was 24 years ago. Now I want to tell you guys, I was actually an intern at a local church in my area called Parkwood Baptist. And so as an intern, I was baptized by immersion. Now also to kind of layer that even more, I had just come off of the field of being a missionary in Southern Africa for the last 13 months. And so from all equates, like I was this professional Christian and I was confronted for the very first time since I had believed in Jesus as my Lord and Savior to be baptized as a believer. Now rewind that, as a child, I was even baptized. I had asked the preacher as a young child if I could be baptized, but the thing was, I really didn't understand what had happened. And so fast forward, my life changed. We moved to North Carolina. My mom's a nurse, my dad's a contractor, and church evaporates from our life altogether. And also, even a lifestyle of believing in God was, I left God, I left the church, and my lifestyle started following after all the things that we see in our culture today, drugs, sex, rock and roll, and ultimately that left me to a place at a hospital after I tried to take my life where a doctor looked at me and said, son, do you wanna live or do you want to die? And in that moment, I knew the right answer, and I told her, I wanna live, but ultimately in my heart of hearts, I had no stinking clue. And so I called upon God after that doctor had left, and I said, Lord, if you are there, please show me something more than the life that I'm living. And from that stage forward, I started going to church, and my life began to change. And ultimately, I made that proclamation of Jesus being my Lord and Savior. That led me to the mission field. That led me to this church for the first time, being paid by a church to help lead students. But I was still confronted with this idea of being baptized as a believer. And I did it because I knew in my heart it was the right thing. So today, I wanna to talk to you guys about the who, the what, the why, the when, the where, the how of baptism and why it matters. Baptism is literally the most beautiful symbolic picture that you and I can ever be a part of. First Peter chapter three, verse 21 tells us that baptism, which corresponds to this, like this picture, it now saves you, not as a removal of dirt, like you're not dirty, but it's an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so when I say this symbolic picture, my go-to illustration is this wedding ring that I'm wearing. I married Betsy on October 6, 2007. And that many years ago, I literally looked at her and she looked at me and she says, I belong to you and you belong to me. And baptism is a lot like that wedding picture. It's nothing that saves me. This ring doesn't repel people away from me, but it does tell people that I belong to, to her and she belongs to me in the same way Baptism is that symbol of saying to you, to saying to your family, to saying to your church, to saying to yourself that I belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to me. Can you think of a more beautiful picture than that? And so not only that, but who should be baptized? And this is what I wanna say, anybody who has believed. Listen to what Mark says. Mark chapter 16, verse 16 says this, Whoever, that beautiful word, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And so my question to you, a lot of us, if we're honest, you know, we maybe have made or have been baptized as a child, maybe as an infant. And, and the thought that I want to give to you is this. If baptism is a symbolic picture that I take after I have believed, can I truly be baptized before you had an opportunity to follow Jesus for yourself? Just like when I was nine years old, I was baptized, but did, I didn't really understand that. And so the second question that I wanna put before you is, have you been baptized? 
after you've placed your trust in Jesus? And if the answer is no, then today you need to make a mental note and take this step in baptism. So the third question that I want to present to you guys today is, how should you be baptized? How should we be baptized? And I would think almost all of us would agree that we want to follow Jesus. That's why we're watching this video, because we want to be better followers of Jesus. So how should we be baptized? We should follow Jesus' model. And so how was Jesus baptized? He was baptized by immersion. He went down to the Jordan River. John the Baptist took him. He was baptized. And we saw, like, the father said, this is my son. I'm well pleased. And this dove came upon him. And it was this empowering of this moment where the spirit came upon him to do ministry. And so we see Jesus being baptized by immersion. So today, you know, question, ask yourself, do you want to follow Jesus? You want to take that step? Then realize that he was baptized by immersion. You know, something that really helped me to see this even more in a cultural landscape was I was in Israel this past year and I was introduced to this thing called a mikvah, which is a ritual cleansing, for lack of a better word, baptistry, where Jewish people would go and they would literally dunk themselves, fully immerse themselves in water as a ritual cleansing. And you saw these mikvahs all over ancient Israel, but also still today, the Jewish culture, before they go to the temple, they will ritually cleanse themselves. I've got great news. The great news is that Jesus washes your sins one time, past, present, and future. And again, this beautiful picture of you associating with yourself with a living Savior who saves you, redeems you, and this picture of him living inside of you is all the ritual cleansing that you need. And so not only like how should you do it, but when should you do it? And, and my word to you, and you may not agree with me, but that's okay, I, but I would ask you to lean in is as soon as you believe. When should you be baptized? As soon as you believe. And you don't have to listen to me, you can listen to scripture. Acts chapter 22 verse 16 says this, and now, why do you wait? The word says, rise and be baptized. Wash away your sin and calling on his name. And so when should you be baptized? As soon as you have believed. Many of you think like, well, I've believed, but I don't feel like I'm worthy enough. And I understand that. I still don't feel like I'm worthy enough. But baptism is not about you being worthy. If it was, then you would be the one hanging on the cross. And guess what? You're not. Baptism is a picture of you saying, Jesus, I trust you and I'm going to follow you and you are going to help me to become the man or the woman that you want me to be. No one in their right mind would wash themselves before they got in the shower. Like you wouldn't like go work outside all day and then literally go wash yourself up and then get in the shower. Why? Because that's what the shower's for. The shower is literally there to make you clean. In the same way, following Jesus through believer's baptism is not saying to the world that you're perfect, but instead saying to the world that you're going to follow the one who is perfect. And this is your first step. Man, so why? I think culturally, like that question, why resonates with so many people. You know, Simon Sinek wrote a book, Start With Why, and today... I want you to understand why you should be baptized and two very important and powerful reasons. Number one, Jesus was baptized. I don't know that you need a more powerful answer than that, but nonetheless, this is fact. Jesus is asking you to do something that he's already done. Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22 says this, Now when all the people were baptized, so all these other people were baptized, and when also Jesus had been baptized as well. We are following in what our Savior has already laid the groundwork for us to do. And he placed himself in another man's trust to do this. The second thing that I want to talk about is, you know, in this idea of why should we baptize is not only did he do it, but he tells you to do it. He commands you to do it. 
one of the greatest things that Jesus left his church was, was the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, it says this, go. And I, I love that word because, you know, oftentimes we think we've got to do something different. And I really believe that word means as you are going, as you're going to the grocery store, as you're going to school, as you're going to work, make disciples of all nations. And then it says this phrase, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus' command to the church to baptize. Or for our situation right now, the question is, should you be baptized? Should you follow in this? And the answer is, if you have trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you have not been baptized by immersion, the answer is yes. John chapter 3, verse 5 also says, Jesus answered, truly, truly. Now, if Jesus says truly twice, we should probably pay attention. So he says, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and also of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Jesus did it. Jesus commands it. So today, I want to ask you a question. When it comes to baptism, have you believed? And if you've believed, have you followed in believers' baptism? And if not, today, I want to ask you to follow in believers' baptism. You know, there's a guy named Charles Blondin, and this was in 1863, so a really long time ago. He was up in New York on this place called Niagara Falls. Maybe you've seen some pictures of it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. And he stretches this tightrope all the way from the U.S. side of Niagara Falls to the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. And if you've never seen it, it's an incredible sight. Go Google it. It's beautiful. He's 160 feet above all of the water. And literally, he does this for weeks. This wasn't a one-time occurrence. He would go out there and he would do all kinds of feats as he would walk across. One day, he just literally walked across straight over, straight back. All the people cheered. They clapped. It was amazing. The next day, he walked backwards. The people cheered. The people clapped. The next day, he got a potato sack, got in that bad boy, walked across, walked back. The people cheered. The next day, he came up. He was on stilts. like He was four foot above himself, walking on this tightrope across Niagara Falls. The water's gushing all over him, and the people clapped. The next day, a bike. And even one day, he literally carried a stove. Think about like a camping stove and a little skillet, and he's like flipping omelets. Like, I'm not making this up like literally this happened you can google it it happened and on the last day it was july 16th he came up the crowd was there ready to see what he was going to do next and he took a blindfold and the people clapped the people cheered and then he had a wheelbarrow and he blindfolded himself he took this wheelbarrow he walked across he walked back the people cheered like oh my gosh you're the best thing and he said, hey, I, I really would like some audience participation. And maybe you've been in church and the preacher gets up. And he says, can I have a volunteer? And, and the crickets like chirped. It was incredible, right? And he asked the people this. He says, do you believe that I can do this again? And all the people are like, of course we believe. They cheered. They rock. Yes, yes, we believe. We believe. And the next phrase that he said was so incredible. If you believe, get in the wheelbarrow. And so today, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, I'm not asking you to get in the wheelbarrow. I'm asking you to get in the water. I'm asking you to follow our Lord and Savior. He led the way. Not only did he lead the way, but he also gave us a command. So today, how many of you need to get in the water? I'm going to pray in a moment, and I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord if, if he's talking to you. And if he says, yes, I am talking to you, then that's your next step. Maybe you're also in here and you've already been baptized by immersion as a believer. Today, as I pray, I really want to encourage you to remember the feeling that you felt leading up to that, the feeling that you felt getting out in that water, the feeling that you felt getting out of that water, how you felt like the day was different, the world was different. Guess what? I've got great news. Nothing's changed. That feeling that you felt is still there. But maybe you just need to take a moment to get 
with the maker and the creator and to remember how good he is, how good he's been. Because guess what? There's more. Today, let me pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I come before you with all of these people on these screens. And I ask you, Lord, to convict those of us who need to say yes. So I want to ask all of you in this moment to ask the Lord in the quietness of your spirit, Jesus, are you talking to me? Jesus, do I need to take this step of baptism? And if the spirit speaks back to you, yes, then take that step. Tell your small group leader, tell your pastor, maybe write an email if you're watching this just from a regular video screen, not associated with a small group. Write a local church, tell somebody that you know that's a believer. And then for the rest of us, help us to take a moment to take stock of our lives where we are, but to go back five months, five years, however long it was when we were in that water and the feeling that we felt and the trust that we had and just the incredible, beautiful experience that we had with our Lord and Savior and knowing that that is not gone and that we can still see that not only in our own lives but others. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you've done. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys, for letting me be with you today.